Madam High Commissioner, I have the uh, pleasure of telling you uh, on behalf of the Ontario Public Service Employees Union that they have uh, awarded you this year their highest honour, which is the Stanley Knowles Humanitarian Award. It is presented in recognition of your tireless efforts and fearless dedication to human rights and social justice for people and peoples all over the world. Just allow me to tell your members how deeply honoured I am by this award. I, uh, to have my name associated with Stanley Knowles in itself is a magnificent uh, recognition and I'm very grateful. In an earlier part of your career you were the Chief Prosecutor in The Hague at the International uh, Tribunal for uh, Criminal Law, I believe. And you issued an arrest warrant at that point for then Yugoslav President Slobodan Milosevic. And you had critics at that point who said that was not a very wise thing to do, that it would be possibly uh, interfering with the peace process. Uh, how do you respond to that? How did you respond to that at the time? And why did you decide to proceed as you did? I believe uh, that there cannot be peace without justice. I think we've tried that for a very long time, solving conflict without bringing uh, a, a just resolution of all the grievances behind it and bringing to account those like Milosevic who were personally criminally responsible for the slaughter, literally, of thousands of people. I really believe that as we now have the ambition to pursue both peace and justice internationally, we should not uh, make justice sub subservient to political interest. This would corrupt entirely the justice exercise. Madame, you have written about the need to recognize economic and social and even cultural rights in the same way that we recognize civil and political rights. And I wonder if you could just uh, explain your thinking on that, please. Well, I'm, I was delighted to hear at the outset of your remarks that there was a recognition of my efforts in the field of social justice. Uh, unfortunately, we often think of social justice as having sort of no space in a courtroom. We very conveniently forget um, in the West, um, and in Canada in particular, that the foundation of the entire human rights system is based on what Franklin Roosevelt used to call freedom from fear and freedom from want. And civil and political rights are anchored in freedom from fear, and economic, social, and cultural rights are the freedom from want. And I believe as a society we should pursue both, and we should use all our tools, including our courts, uh, for the vindication of both sets of rights. In Colombia, the situation of trade union rights is abysmal. There are more uh, union leaders killed in Colombia than in any other country of the world uh, in recent times. I wonder if you could share your perspective on that situation, where it comes from, and, and also perhaps what we in Canada can do about that. Colombia is still in the midst of an internal armed conflict, and there's no question that trade unionists have been system systematically targeted uh, by uh, all factions of illegal armed groups and by paramilitaries, and occasionally uh, there are certainly allegations even of including uh, government forces. Uh, we've engaged with the government. They've now put in place measures uh, to redress this alarming trend, which saw 2006 as one of the worst uh, years. The government has now put in place a program to try to address this uh, catastrophic uh, uh, situation, and we will continue to be very proactive in the, the defense and protection of these rights. As to what particularly trade unionists can do in Canada, uh, again, I don't think it will be a surprising world in that environment to say you have to show solidarity. You, it seems to me that we cannot think of these issues as too far away in somebody else's problem. Uh, and certainly in my own work, when I travel and I meet uh, victims of human rights violations, whether it's journalists targeted or trade unionists, their sense of abandonment is usually the saddest part uh, of their predicament. And the comfort that they take from knowing that somebody's watching, somebody out there is, uh, cares and expresses publicly uh, solidarity is, is hugely important and comforting. You've done some incredible work, but you've also seen the worst that humanity can do often. Uh, are you a pessimist or a, an optimist about uh, humanity's future? I'm very optimistic uh, for all kinds of reasons, maybe because I spend enough time with younger people. It's very, I think, difficult not to be optimistic, first of all, when you see the amount of energy and capacity and talent. And I'm not just talking about you know, the developed world and very educated people. 
but above all, it's not just the growth in our capacity to make this place a better place, but it's the resilience of the human spirit, I think, that you see, certainly in my work, in the worst predicament, you know, from the worst part of a Darfur uh, camp with displaced persons who've been there for months, uh, looking completely abandoned, but you still see mothers caring for their children with the same kind of loving uh, attitude and with hope uh, that I think uh, is enough to, to carry the strength of their spirit. Uh, we've got activists across the country. And if you look around the world right now, uh, there's an awful lot going on, attacks on human rights under economic conditions, political conditions, religion is blamed sometimes, ethnic con violence and so on. Um, what can those activists do uh, in their workplaces, in their communities, to, to help you in the kind of work that you're trying to do to bring human rights to the world? You can't fight all the good fights. Uh, very often I think of my own work, which encompasses all human rights, and I'm thinking, oh my God, what about the environment? Why am I not there? Well, you can't be everywhere. I think you have to pick one or two good fights and, and try to engage, but for the rest of it, uh, I think you have to vote for governments that will pick all the other good fights that you can't be engaged in, make sure that, you, that we collectively elect governments that are uh, determined to be part of the solution, not part of the problem, uh, and basically uh, mandate them on our behalf to do all the rest uh, of what we can't do on a day-to-day -day basis. I think uh, doing that work at home is already an enormously important starting point. Uh, and then the vote. That's the ticket. Okay, thank, you. <laughs> thank you for your time. My pleasure. <laughs>